Uh, the previous owner said he did rebuild the brake mechanism on both sides, but he never adjusted it. So we're gonna have to get the tractor jacked up and get the brakes adjusted. You turn it clockwise until the brakes start to drag and then back it off a hair and leave it. There, it's just starting to drag now. So I'm gonna back it off. Yeah, that feels good. There is a second adjustment right here, and this one has a lock nut on it that needs to be secured after the adjustment has been made on the smaller bolt. Other than the lock nut, the process is the same.
So I've got the brakes both adjusted. However, pedals don't seem to be engaging the internal mechanism. So I'm gonna have to go do some research on that, figure out what's going on. These brake rods are actually missing on both sides. They thread into that hole back there. And then they actually fit over these posts right here. This is the right brake pedal. I'll raise it all the way up. And then you sort of slip it over and uh, install the spring. I've got the spring installed in the cotter pen. We've got tension on the brake pedal because it's pulling the rod like it should. All right, let's go do the other side. Rotate it in a little bit and see where we're at. So I've got the rod connected, the spring reattached, and I went ahead and put a quick pin on this side instead of a cotter pin. I think I'm gonna replace the other one as well. Just a little bit easier to deal with. And uh, we should have brakes now. So obviously part of this challenge for me is uh, figuring out what the previous owner did and did not do. What might need adjusted or is missing completely. I really do kind of enjoy the investigation aspect of it. Uh, what's missing, what isn't, what do I need to do from here? Taking it one step at a time. The other part of the challenge is there's a pretty steep learning curve for me here because this is the first Alice Chalmers that I've owned and it's a uh, it's quite a bit different than the Fords and the Farmalls and such that I'm more used to and the brake system is a good example of that you know I was pretty confident I got them adjusted correctly and then I go to push on the pedals and uh, nothing happens well I didn't know that those control rods were completely missing down here on both sides so again, it just takes some investigation, some uh, research on the uh, internet. But again, that's part of the enjoyment for me. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. Before I crank the engine anymore or attempt to start it, I want to check the valve clearances.
So the previous owner said he did put new manifold gaskets on it, but never torqued it down. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna torque these manifold bolts to 25 foot pounds. I'm gonna see if these are tight as well, as long as I'm here. Those two don't need to be torqued, but I just had the torque wrench in my hand, so that's what we're using. The previous owner said he did go through this carburetor at some point, but I don't know how long ago that was, and I don't know what he did. So I'm gonna take it apart and inspect it for myself. Easier to do it now than wait till we get everything hooked up and have a problem with it. There is an ample amount of carburetor videos on YouTube. Uh, I've done a couple myself, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time filming this. I'm just gonna take it apart, check everything out, make sure it's good, put it back together. If I come across something interesting, then I'll stop and show you. So he did a pretty good job. Uh, new gaskets, everything is uh, clean and clear on the inside. The only thing I did on the inside was adjust the float. It was a little bit too high for my liking, so I just bent it down just a hair. But the only issue I have is I'm missing the idle adjust screw. So I need to go hunt through the uh, bins of bolts and see if I can find it. Well, I believe I found it and the spring. It's a brand new needle. The only thing I'm questioning is I'm wondering if there needs to be like a collar or an O-ring down inside there. I'm not sure about that. So I'll have to investigate that. But otherwise, the carburetor is good. All right, I've got the carburetor reinstalled. I've got the throttle governor linkage hooked up. It's not adjusted properly, but at least I got it hooked up. I also have the choke rod installed and functioning. So I've got the throttle and governor linkage adjusted a little bit better. At least it's in the ballpark now. as well as the hydraulic linkage. Also have the PTO uh, lever functioning. Let's see if the PTO works. There's the problem. Looks like there's supposed to be a shear bolt in there. See if we can find one of those. So I've got an old bolt in there. I intentionally did not go with a hardened bolt, like a grade eight, for example. This is just a grade two or whatever. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a shear pin, but for now I'm gonna err on the side of caution. Let's see if this works. All right, here's the fuel tank. Try to get a look down in there. The tank looks pretty good as it is, but uh, there is a little bit of surface rust in there. I'm just gonna throw some evapor rust in there, let it soak for a day, then we'll come back and check it. Looks like there's about a quarter inch covering the entire bottom of the tank. So that's perfect. We'll let that soak and come back and check on it tomorrow. So 
So I'm gonna flush it out with some gasoline and it'll be ready to go. This shaft down here is for the uh, hand clutch and there's a clevis right there also that I believe attaches to the hand clutch. It looks relatively straightforward, so I'm gonna see if I can get that uh, hooked up real quick. I found this pin in my bucket of bolts. This has to be the pin for the clevis end down there. So once again, the previous owner comes through. I sure appreciate him giving me all those parts. All right, I got them to line up. All right, got new cotter pins in there. Got the hand clutch attached. I also still need to adjust the main clutch puddle itself. I think you're supposed to have about uh, half inch to one inch play. And this one's got four inches so on this clutch pedal mechanism there's a bar from right there and it comes up here the end down there is actually threaded so I think I might be able to just remove this end and then rotate this bar which will either shorten or lengthen the rod to achieve the proper pedal adjustment So do I need to shorten it or lengthen it? I'm gonna try lengthening it first. Yeah, I think that's the right direction. We're gonna go one more revolution, try that. <clears throat> yeah, much better. There's some inherent slop in here that I'm just not gonna be able to get out. I mean, it, it moves almost a half inch without even gauging the rod. We probably got between this end and the other end, probably got about an inch of slop. And then I've got about an inch of travel after that. So we're gonna go with that. I think that's good enough. Instead of going with a massive cotter pin again, uh, I'm just using a quick pin. That seems to be just fine. I found and fixed the leak in the hydraulic pump. Luckily, it was just this loose fitting. And I painted that old starter, so now it kind of matches the rest of the tractor and doesn't look quite as cruddy. The last thing I'm going to do today is install the uh, starter control rod. Let's see, I think this one's too short. This one might work. This one might work even better. Well, it's not perfect, but I got it pretty close to the factory bend.
Well, I made some good progress again today. We're getting closer and closer to uh, being able to fire this up, but there's still a lot more to do. So please stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Come here, Miss America. Good girl. Yes, my girl. What's your sister doing? Come here, Allie. Come here. Good girl. Good girls. <laughs>